So I have my SQL Server set up. Now I want to allow client connectivity. Now this is going to assume that you have the SQL Server set up correctly. You've configured the firewall, you've activated the TCP ports, you've done all of your configurations on the server that you need. For the clients, frequently we're going to connect to the server using ODBC. Now, <clears throat> Normally what you'll do is you'll have an application that uses an ODBC connection to connect to the server. So sometimes when you're installing these applications, you're going to need to set up, once you get the server up and running, you're going to need to set up the ODBC connection. So let me show you how to do that real quick. And this is something you do on all your client computers. Um, you can find it under the control panel. I'm going to be lazy here and I'm just going to search for ODBC, which stands for Open Database Connectivity, by the way. So here's my ODBC data sources, 32-bit and 64-bit. I'm going to pick a 64-bit. It's going to open up on my other window, so I'm going to drag it over here. All right, so I have user data sources, system data sources, file data sources. Okay, normally what you're going to do is set up a user or a system data source. The user data source is obviously available to the user. The system data source is available to anybody who uses a computer. So I want to add drag this back over to the right window too and I'm gonna do an SQL server connection so you'll see we have SQL server we have SQL native client 11 has a bunch of other ODBC options as well but we're gonna do an SQL server and I'm gonna click finish all right so we're gonna need a name for the connection now when you're doing this the application that you're gonna use is or that you're using is going to look for a specific ODBC name. So you need to make sure if you're setting this up for somebody, you need to make sure that you use the right name. In this case, we're just going to use test. And then a description, test connection for ODBC demo. And then which server do we want to connect to? And here, if we were running servers, we could drop down and do a server browse list. And here are a bunch of them that we might be able to connect to. Now, I actually don't want to use any of these servers, so I'm going to type my own. And I'm just going to type test, because I don't want to try to connect to an actual live server. So I'm going to click Next. And then how are we going to connect? So I can use Windows NT Authentication. It's not actually Windows NT Authentication, it's Windows Authentication. So it's using my existing network login. If you set up your server using uh, Windows Authentication, this is what you would need. If you set it up using mixed mode authentication, then you may have to specify a different uh, one here. And so I'm gonna leave that the same, uh, connect SQL to SQL Server to obtain default settings. I'm going to uncheck that because I don't actually have one. Um, and then change the default database, which one are we going to connect to, attach a file name if needed, handful of other settings, and depending on which one, at this point, most of the time you've already gotten everything set up. However, depending on the SQL Server configuration and the application, you may need to come through and set a bunch of these other settings. Anyway, you get to finish click finish and it will try to connect to your ODBC source. So a new ODB data source will be created using these following settings. Normally what you'd want to do, now I'm going to a machine that doesn't exist so I'm not going to do this, but normally what you do is you click test data source and that will come back and tell you yes it connected or no it didn't. If it connected then great we're ready to roll. If it didn't connect that means we need to go back through and make some changes. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK and that's going to put in my test connection right here. So now that I've got this defined in the operating system, my application can do queries to the test ODBC connection, which will then connect it back to the SQL server. So that's how you set up client access. Now remember, a lot of this is going to be defined by the application that you're using, right? So <clears throat> that application, it may be written in Access, it may be written in C, it may be written, it may be a web application, whatever. That's going to define a lot of how you need to do this setup. So there's no one size fits all. It has to fit that particular application and your SQL configuration. If you are doing, if you are working with in-house SQL developers, then they're going to tell you how you need the configuration set up. If you purchase a product from another company that's been developed using SQL, they're going to tell you how you need to do it. The point is, as an SQL Server Administrator or Windows Desktop Administrator or something like that, we're not defining how this works. We're setting this up to match the requirements of the developers. All right. So that's a real quick run through on how to set up SQL client
connectivity using ODBC.